Well, for Christmas uh, 2021, I uh, was, <laughs> Santa brought me a stroke. I uh, woke up one morning and took a pee and uh, went back to sleep for a couple of hours, woke up and I couldn't stand up. <laughs> that was, it was weird. I was talking funny, talking drunk, which I was not. We went to the uh, Raccoon Lodge the night before, and I had this awesome uh, prime rib uh, dip sandwich. And uh, one beer, I think. Maybe, maybe because I, did, I didn't drink. <laughs> but uh, I called uh, Debbie, and I, she said, what's wrong? And I said... I don't feel right. <laughs> I couldn't stand up. My right leg was messed up a little bit. And uh, later on, I found out my right hand was. And uh, so she said, do you need, uh, is it, this is med a medical emergency? I, I said, let me see if my insurance is working. Because <laughs> I was, been to, you know, when you're on laid off. And with the Trump and the Biden extra money and I, I, <laughs> I made too much money to qualify for the uh, Oregon Health Plan. And uh, thanks a lot. I never needed the health care that I paid for out of work for 15 years. <laughs> now I need it. But, uh, yeah, they said you have health care, your insurance is good. I said, Okay. Take me to the ER at OHSU. Now, OHSU, when I had a, a bad tooth infection uh, in 1999, I went there and had an abscess, and the doctor thought I wanted pain, kills, pain pills. I, I Look, they took me up into a room on a deserted floor and wanted to have a talk with me. I said, I don't want the pain pills. I want antibiotics. And, you know, yeah, I'm not addicted to antibiotics. I want the, the infection to go away. That will cure the pain. Then you can do something to my tooth. You can, remove, you can take it out. So, it was a long, you know, they just give me the intervention talk. I said, I don't need this. I've already done this. You know, I was I had my own AA groups and stuff for ten years, so they hooked me up. But so I figured that place took care of me and uh, take me there. It's close, uh, so I went there and I checked my blood pressure. It was two sixty two over one eighty nine, and they handled it beautifully. They didn't get upset, didn't get tense, did, which didn't make me tense, right? So I, I appreciate that. I, I can't say enough about OHSU doctors. I've had great treatment the whole time. But they decided they're going to uh, admit me and keep me overnight. And uh, I had two blood pressure cuffs on at one time, and <laughs> it was in stereo. So... Uh, <clears throat> They ran every kind of test. Cat scan, and didn't find any cats. That's a joke. Uh, then an MRI, which is, you know, kind of claustrophobic. So Debbie said, he's claustrophobic. And so they said, we'll take care of it. Yeah, they gave me some good drugs out of van that made me uh, not care what happened. <laughs> and uh, ultrasound and uh, all these tests that... I was a little afraid of going to the doctor because I thought, oh, they'll look at me and go, all right, it's an old project car. We're going to work him over. <laughs> well, finally, they shot me full of so much stuff and made my blood pressure go down, but they kept me for four days. I kept thinking, you know, before I was afraid of being kept prisoner, but actually, you know, uh, the nurses are so awesome and they they are like saints and angels saying and the lady that took care of me when I was in my proper room because I was in the ER 
And man, they kept bringing in trauma patients. One lady across the hall was moaning and screaming in pain. And uh, they brought somebody in. They said he had, he's bleeding profusely. He's gunshots. I thought, wow, I'm probably low on the priority list. But uh, they kept me in, dosed me up, and the doctor wanted to send me home. Well, because it's Christmas. I said, I don't care about Christmas. I don't want to go home before I am, you know, okay for real. Don't just patch it up and hope for the best. I don't care about Christmas. Uh, Christmas meant I was going to go and go to Debbie's sister. Forget that. I don't give a shit about that. They're not my family, and so I don't count them as my family. And so, yeah, take that and run with it. But uh, it didn't matter to me. Debbie was great. She stayed uh, with me the whole time and took me there. She's been giving me rides everywhere because I can't... uh, can't see properly to drive, so I can't go back to work, even if they called me back to work, which they haven't yet at Portland Community College. I think my job, being in traffic every day, all day, and delivering so much paper by a hand truck and uh, not getting any help from anyone, even the... Uh, the uh, Central Distribution, who stores our paper that we own at their facility. No, you can't take that. (laughs) Okay, you're going to be a jerk? Forget it. I'll just drive back to Sylvania campus and pick up another 20 cases where I could just go to their warehouse and do it from there. So, thanks a lot. Uh... He helped out with my uh, condition. I appreciate that. I'm I'm sarcastic because they kind of pissed me off. And, uh, well, but that's another story. I guess I'm not supposed to get pissed off. Well, I'm not pissed off to, well, anyway. So it's been four months today that I got home from my Christmas stay at OHSU, I had steelhead salmon and asparagus and potatoes and cheesecake to eat there. It was awesome. The breakfasts, uh, the eggs are no good. Don't if you stay in the hospital, don't get the omelet. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I'm doing better. My uh, blood pressure at home is. Uh, about 128 over 60 and that's a good number I guess I take it all the time but uh, I'm on six medications some three times a day some two times a day some once a day (laughs) gives me something to keep track of but uh, I had one doctor I had the only doctor was available was in Hillsboro which is a quite a long drive from where I live and through traffic. So a doctor's appointment would uh, require Debbie to take the day off, and uh, which she can't do, even though she works at home. And then the long drive out there to, to see a guy for 20 minutes. So finally I got accepted into Gabriel Park, which is, you know, five minutes away from my house, with a great doctor named Samantha George, and... She was good, and uh, the people were nice, and there's a pharmacy there. So uh, that's good. So phase one, (laughs) I still have a lot of laps to run, but uh, at least I'm doing better than before. You know, I said, you've come a long way, yeah, (laughs) all the way back from Hillsborough. The nurse out there was pretty pushy and in a hurry, and there was never anybody in the clinic. <laughs> so it, that was weird. And when they took my blood, I got, uh, and like it was a, it hurt. It was all red. And the lady that took my blood the second time, same one, 
said, oh, you'd probably get a dirty na- needle. What? You'd probably get a dirty needle. And I don't think she was joking. She didn't have that laughing. Thing. Oh, great. So uh, I'm glad I don't go that go out there anymore. And uh, uh, I'm running out of steam. <laughs> the pills kind of make me uh, tired and uh, a little loopy. But uh, my right arm works now where I could, you know, I'm a shredding guitar player. It always works totally in tandem. And uh, it just, the right arm wouldn't cooperate. The left hand worked okay. The right one just didn't want to do it. But since I've been playing uh, guitar and bass and drums every day, because I got nothing better to do, and I also can't get into physical therapy, but... Uh, they said, well, can you put your pants on? Well, yeah, I can get dressed and all that stuff, and I have no problem walking. I just can't talk right, and I can't play the bass as fast as I used to be able to. <laughs> and for those who know me, I'm a speed metal <laughs> bass player, and uh, but now it's working better. So, uh, and doing these videos for cable access and YouTube helped me out a lot. And Fred Washburn calling me is a great thing. And Dean Casanova, he call, he contacted me in the hospital. And we've been in touch the whole time since then. So it's really great to connect. And Mike Varney, I talked to him quite a bit. And... Uh, you know, since this pandemic, I'm really <laughs> deprived of people. Depraved? Deprived? I don't see many people. I see Debbie and uh, the waiters at uh, one of the two restaurants we go to. And uh, I quit eating meat. It makes it, it was making me not feel good. Man, something's wrong with the meat these days. I right, got some turkey because I thought, oh, yeah. Turkey sandwich with Swiss cheese would be great. And uh, from the first bite, I tasted mold. And that's not a good sign. The, the kid, they don't have, they have these kids at work now, and they don't really give a shit. It's kind of like Slackerville. New Seasons was like that, too, at, you know, before they closed up. Before, it was like uh, women that were a little older that, you know, Took pride in doing the job right. But uh, every time I've eaten meat or eggs, it uh, kind of wants to just jump out of me afterwards. <laughs> so I quit doing that, no problem. I also saw a movie uh, in between this where called uh, What the Health About Food. It was basically about the meat industry and how, uh, you know, like pigs have a lot of abscess, so they put your cut into them with a knife and the pus goes everywhere and gets gets into the flesh and soaks up into the flesh. So, ugh. I don't need that. At least with plants, they can't get pussy abscesses. <laughs> so I've been uh, doing it that way. I, I don't need much anyway, but I was getting, you uh, Fish tacos or uh, chicken enchilada, and now I just uh, don't do that. So I feel better. And my girlfriend's a vegetarian, which pretty much makes me a vegetarian too, as Jules said in Pulp Fiction. And you know, where'd you get that cheeseburger? <laughs> I haven't had a cheeseburger for a long time. Because I can't drive to a fast food place. I haven't had fast food for over a year. One time we went to McDonald's when we went to go uh, do her, her da- dad's stuff after he died. And uh, it wasn't that great. McDonald's. All, you know, all these places always tasted so great. But then uh, something happened during the pandemic where... <laughs> They hire people that were not the experts they were before, so it doesn't taste the same. Or maybe it's just me. Maybe I just changed. 
I lost a hundred pounds. <laughs> and, uh, I look at myself now compared to videos. It's like, wow, <laughs> I'm a lot smaller. And, uh, Well, I just want to get in here and give you kind of a... <coughs> ah, I swallow water when I, I drool. <laughs> I wanted to get on here and because uh, it's four months and uh, give myself an update. This is how I, I keep track of it because I don't know. If, I, don't know I don't think anybody else watches my stuff. I get some comments, and I appreciate the comments here, so... Uh, that makes me feel good, and uh, I put my guitar playing. It's just mainly uh, for me to chart my progress or remember a song idea because I don't have a easy way to record stuff except for on my phone, and so I, it, <laughs> I just upload it to YouTube. And it says I've been writing songs for the last month, the last one I wrote in the style of the Ravers and the Penetrators. See, the Ravers were called the Penetrators, spelled P E N I, like Peeny Traders. But when he played at the uh, Met, which was an all ages gay club, where Dante's is now. And uh, we were asked, backed by a popular band. Yeah, the bass player and uh, especially his drummer had a really good time down there. And uh, we took uh, Chris Zuman's band, The Untouchables Place, when they played with, uh, what's that, Southern Rock Band from Canada. I, I can't remember. They played the Paramount. So I was like, hey, can you go do this gig? Sure. Just like Tuesday night or something. But... Uh, uh, that's that. My life is, you know, waking up late because I can't seem to sleep. Last night I watched uh, Rudy Ray Moore in uh, The Human Tornado. He, he's so funny. And then I watched the uh, Misfits, Kings of Sleaze documentary by April Jones, which I'm in. And, uh, wow, I look a lot smaller now. But... Uh, that's what uh, I do. I talk to my boss quite a bit, and so we're not ready to go back to work the way it was. That's fine, because I can't drive anyway. i got to get an eye surgery sometime in July or later, which might fix it up. And uh, uh, I'm not looking forward to getting back in the rat race that people drive nuts there's so many outsiders who moved here and so many people in a hurry to do nothing it's just uh, I just don't like the way the whole world's going you know it's like we've become the third world country that we were always told we didn't want to be and Jeez, man, now 192 people I knew are dead since 1999, mostly from cancer. And uh, Portland is a, people want to move to Portland, but they don't realize that we have a high suicide rate because of the rain, I think it is, especially among young males between 20 and 26. And also a very high rate of cancer, especially in the southeast area. People who grew up and people who lived in the southeast, close, it's closer to Mount Tabor, you get the more cases there are. My family's from there. A lot of people in my family had cancer. And eight other unrelated families had the same thing. So... Uh, or it's in the water. You know, we have great water here. This smells like a swimming pool. Swimming pool. Uh, you know, you run, I, I buy smart water. 
it doesn't smell like anything. But you know, the tap water here, it smells like it's coming straight from a swimming pool. Yuck. But at least your guts are clean, right? So Portland is not what it was cracked up to be at one time. We had clean air, we had good water, and we didn't have so many people here that came from everywhere else. Because they read the brochure, come to Portland, and they show it, and it's always sunny. <laughs> the pictures are sunny with flowers and people riding bikes in the sunshine. And trust me, I worked outside for five years riding parking tickets. It rained so much that my feet got blue fungus between the toes. Uh, yeah, turquoise. <laughs> it was a uh, goatee. I rode my motorcycle to work. I walked outside, you know, 10 or 12 miles a day. I had a great Columbia sportswear. That's the best thing about Oregon is uh, Columbia sportswear. You can wear hiking rain gear with pajamas on and not be cold or wet. So uh, that's the name of that tune. Uh <laughs> I'm here, I'm still alive and well. Still alive and well. Every now and then, you know what's kind of hard to tell, I'm still alive and well. As Johnny Winter said. But uh, I think that's all I got to say about everything right now. And uh, thank you for watching. And uh, I'll give you another report in a couple of months. They can't operate on my eye until I'm six months after my stroke so uh, the end of June is my next appointment so I'll talk about that but hopefully my kidneys will hold up the pills I take are not good for your kidneys <laughs> for the blood pressure so you know boy you hit 60 and the expiration date goes hey your shelf life <laughs> Well, I, I did pretty good. So I tried not to waste my time. I've released, I recorded and released 42 albums full length, and I've turned in uh, 1,200 and over 1,250 cable access shows. A lot more on YouTube uh, since 1993, but since 2019, the numbers. 938 because I got nothing better to do but sit here and talk to my friend the camera and you and thank you for being a friend and uh, appreciate you getting a hold of me it makes my day and uh, I'll see you later thank you and good night I'm Matt McCourt